Okay, well, welcome. I don't have a lot of things to show you, but I figure we gotta keep the ball rolling. We gotta keep on turning. So we're gonna make a short video here, just showing off some things. I've been going through that collection that I showed you yesterday, or the last video, with lots and lots and lots of stuff in it. Lots of compilations, lots of Time Warner, lots of, uh, not Reader's Digest, but lots of the things that we were talking about, the compilations. Now, in one of the comments on the last Reddit post that I posted the last video on, <laughs> um, someone said, ah, oh, these Reader's Digest things, those are crap, those are like the old KTEL things they're 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 crappy compilations and we'd like to have and I you know I don't like them and, and okay whatever um, that's cool and I had some questions and he never came back to answer them you know like well what do you think about homemade mixtapes and what do you think about you know if I, if I wanted uh, you know some easy listening hits did I really need to buy 12 20 albums to get all of them when I really only wanted a few songs out of each one but anyway, I didn't know what KTEL was, and so I looked it up, and KTEL is exactly what we were talking about, but it was a specific brand of things, and uh, look at this, I found one. Here's a KTEL, Rock and Roll Fever. Oh, I can see this. Volume one, and I haven't listened to this yet, so I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm assuming that this is gonna be really poor quality based on what that guy was saying and whatever. So the KTEL people, they were, they were just one of the early innovators of with these compilation curation greatest hits things and and I get what the guy's saying because if you're really into it you want to have the whole thing and you want to and albums were made as albums and not just singles and that's one of the the things that we were hearing about with iTunes is like well listen I put together this whole album I, I want I want everybody to hear it or you say well look you know the other way to look at it is, is you got three hits and you filled the rest of the 45 minutes of the of the of the album with with filler crap that really isn't that good so i don't want it or i listened to your whole album and i only like three songs on it so forget the rest of it so there's place for it and especially when you're digging into things where i don't know the people i don't know the artists and i'm looking for a mood and not a actual artist necessarily but that's neither here nor there now, I did want to show this. This is great. This is the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band with a circle being broken. It's a double cassette issue, and I don't have anything to say about the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band or, or this album in particular, but I just wanted to show this because I forgot about these, but they exist. This is a single double cassette um, holder. So, and I do, now, when I saw this, I was like, that was, oh yeah, I remember these. This is actually made in England, it says, which is interesting. Now, you know, one of the things I, I've noticed as we were going through all this stuff is almost every single cassette from the 70s and 80s and into the 90s, almost every single one of them says, made in USA, or possibly Canada, or like the, the one that we talked about, the Kaiser Walzer was made in Germany, but like, nothing was made in China. Nothing was made off somewhere else in Malaysia or Indonesia or anything. We actually made the stuff here. There's good reason for that, you know what? That's why it lasted 40 years. Anyway, and, and, and this is, uh, instead of tape two, side one, this is side three and side four. It's interesting. I don't know, I haven't listened to this yet. Um, what I do, the, the memory that I have of this, okay, so this is like a regular part of the thing, and then this is a double... It's not even stuck together though. It's 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 sharing that plastic. This is not like double thick or anything. It's not like two cases glued together. Um, these things never fit in the little in your cases because the they didn't have the proper slots. So that's the first one I found of this. Like I said, I forgot about them. But last thing I want to show you on this particular video. Is 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 this whoa, sliding down the 50 most records, 50 most loved records of your life? Now, if you're watching this video, you're already on YouTube. So when you're done here, oh, look at that glare. That's horrible glare. I got to figure out how to fix the glare. Oh well, that'll help. When you're done watching this, or pause this now and open up a new window and type in 50 of the most loved records of your life and the commercial, the two minute commercial that was selling these is actually up there. Now, here's the interesting thing about this. Now this is tape one, tape two, tape three. Here's the interesting thing is 
All the, one, the tape two says CBS special products. This is the same as the pictures on that I saw online. Tape three, I don't have the case for. That's a whole different issue. Here's tape one. I have two different copies of this, and they appear to be the same, except for, except for this one is advertised and distributed by Suffolk Marketing, and this one is advertised and distributed by the Beautiful Music Company. Despite the fact that they are printed slightly differently on the back, and this one is a lot easier to read, the one from the Beautiful Music Company, they are, in fact, the same exact cassette. Uh, they're both by SMI, whatever that is, and they're the same exact music selection. So that's interesting. I don't know. Uh, they are definitely the most loved records of someone who was... I picture this as like, so this was in the a early 80s, and so this was marketed to people in their 50s and 60s that were that age in their early 80s, so most of the people that this is marketed to are long gone, but we're talking about the most loved records of your life if you grew up in the 40s and the 50s, basically, and it's some good stuff. I've listened to the first one. I haven't listened to the second one or not, but let's see, Moments to Remember from by the Four Lads, The Three Bells. But in the Browns, Just Walking in the Rain by Rosemary Cl oh, Tenderly by Rosemary Clooney, Make the World Go Away, etc., etc. It's kind of cheesy. It's stuff that your grandma listened to, but it's kind of funny because my kid's grandma listened to rock and roll when she grew up. It's a whole different world out there. But I like to think that old people had some dignity with based on the music that they listened to. And uh, I kind of... Something about... Well, there's something weird about people that never grew up, and part of growing up is, I don't know, something about rock and roll, man. It's good time party music, and it gets me pumping, and it gets me going, but it's not stuff that I just want to listen to hanging out all the time. It's not like that. So, there's that. Those are the things that I just wanted to show you today. These are some, some things. Now, I'm just going to quick pan over here, and you can kind of see what's going on here. I kind of organized these a little bit. Got a lot of things to go through here. I have all three tapes of Freedom Rock, bunch of things like the Golden Hits of the 50s and 60s, 24 karat classic rock and roll put out by Sitco. There's a 1990 and a 1991 edition so far. Whole sorts of country compilations. This rock and roll jukebox, I only have X amount of these volumes. But that's on like a, it, it, it looks like, it says it's printed in the UK, made in the UK, and they look, it's licensed and made in the UK, so it looks like this is, got sent over to the UK, and sold on TV, original artists. This is like kind of a low quality tape, and these are, um, this is just paper, just, just regular construction paper kind of with the printing on it. So I don't know what the deal is with this, and then they came back. Now, I haven't listened to them yet, but those are all that I have left uh, out of that spot. Um, tons of tapes with no cases. That's just a, a small section of them. I don't know what to do with these because they don't have J cards, but they're, they're compilation tapes that I need to go through. Um, one of the things that I had to do with all this is to make sure that the right tapes were in the right cases because a lot of them were in the wrong spot, or it was the right band but the wrong album, or it was the right compilation but the wrong tape. And I did okay to find most of them, but I'm missing some things, and some things are not complete, and some things I have tape two in the tape one case, and that's all the way there is to it, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But it's very exciting, and it's something that I've been, been able to come out here and do, and been enjoying doing that. Um, as one of my hobbies with obviously the world is still in its madness and so sometimes you just need a little bit of sanity to knock yourself out a little bit. Now I did want to show you one thing. On a previous episode we looked at Kaiser Walzer. Kaiser Walzer was this 1973 German release of 12 waltzes. We looked at this tape and I said something about the recording and I got a good recording out of it or whatever, but it turned out I didn't have a good recording. So I went back and I listened to uh, I, I listened to it again and, and did the recording. Now, here, first of all, this is a 1973 tape and I was still getting bumps into the red properly in 
and, and, and it sounds really good. And, and, and so this tape from Germany, which doesn't look too dark, so it's just probably just a regular old Mr. Ferrick. Uh, but that's okay. It sounded great. But here's the interesting thing, and I forgot about this the first when we were talking about it in the last episode or whatever I did. The first time I listened to this, I kind of put it on, and it was it's waltzes and classical music, and I kind of fell asleep in the chair. And all of a sudden, right, all of a sudden, the tape clicked and stopped right in the middle of a song. And of course, that woke me up because it was you know a click and whatever. And I was like, oh no, what happened? Did something happen with the tape? Did it get eaten? Did it chew? No. This thing records right to the leader and then stops, and then when it flips over, it starts right back again. There is no song separation. They just took it to the end of the tape and then flipped over the tape and kept going. They're, like it, it cuts off in the middle of a waltz. But other than that, it's a very cool tape, and and I I, I definitely enjoy it. And, and it's one of my one of my uh, I like this tape. I like for some reason this is one of my one of the ones that I really enjoy. The fact that I have as piece of history I guess so there you go that's that for today that's only a quick peek I've got piles and piles of things to show you that I've been set because I've been separating these things out so we got enough content for 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 a little bit here now and I got to figure out how to do this light thing so it's not so glaring lots of glare all over the place but we'll figure it out in the meantime Oh, I'd look this up, look up the commercial for Freedom Rock, start looking it up, start thinking about, well, hey, what do you have in your collection that, that, that really was a TV commercial to begin with? And they were, they were the first infomercials, pretty cool, huh? All right, anyway, until next time, try to stay sane out there, try to stay safe out there, wash your hands, keep your stick on the ice. And remember what my cousin Steve used to say, if the women don't find you handy, wait, screwed that up if the women don't find you handsome at least make sure they find you handy and if they don't find you handy this is my part at least make sure you bring some good tunes <laughs>